fourth quarter, fourth quarter woes for the Sixers. Look how long it takes. Here's that one four pick and roll. No action. Nothing really going on. 1145 sideline pick and roll. James Harden for three. Misses. Sixers do a better job of getting back on transition, getting matched up. Again, your best offense is a good defense. That may sound cliche and corny, but it's so true. And look at this. Look how wide open Derek White is. Does he hit it? He doesn't hit it, but an offensive rebound, bad box out. So again, your best offense is a good defense. Let's see if they get a shot out of this. No, they don't. But they get two good looks at the basket. And sometimes it's just that simple. Playing good defense, boxing out, getting back on transition, not allowing the defense to set up like they do right here. So it's so hard. Niang for three, and he misses. I mean, what do they say? It's a make or miss league. It's a bang, bang league. Make or miss. You live by the three, you die by the three. Those cliche sayings. I mean, Jason Tatum killed the Sixers last night. A lot of people complaining about Doc Rivers' rotations. But again, I mean, we don't have much of a bench. Sometimes the bench shows up, sometimes they don't. I was a proponent for, I was heavy on maybe Maxi should come off the bench. They did that for a while, and the Sixers were almost in first place when they did that. Like, that was a great move, I felt, by Doc Rivers. You know, Maxi doesn't really give you much rebounds or assists. He's just really like a scorer, and we really need that punch off the bench, which we don't have. So you get a three by Niang, but again, everybody's just standing around, standing around, little backdoor cut. From Brogdon, 939 in the fourth. Smart, possible offensive foul. Little shots like that. Marcus Smart. Tough basket. I mean, look at this. Look how slow he is bringing the ball up the court, getting into the offense. And there's nothing. I mean, who's he going to pass to? Niang on two people. It's a big shot. He's looking for the foul. Nine minutes and 11 seconds left in the fourth. You got a little bit of player movement, but not much. But see, those kind of plays, eight minutes in the fourth, down by eight, you give up an offensive rebound to Tatum and a, and a foul. Those are the plays that kill you. So again, too much standing around from the Sixers. Not getting back on transition, not getting, not pushing the pace on offense, giving up second chance points. I don't know if we said that already. Fouling in crucial moments of the game and no player or ball movement. Just standing around watching Harden ISO or Embiid ISO. And here comes Embiid and here comes Maxi again. But the game is pretty much over at this point. Here's Harden. Nice pass. Does Melton make it? I think he does. He has 7.34 left in the, in the quarter. Six-point game, right? Sixers have a chance, and that's pretty good offense, right? Like a driving kick for a wide-open corner three. Those are the kind of plays that, you know, the game, that's where the game is going now. Heavy reliance on a three-point shot. I mean, if you make those three-pointers at a high clip, you tend to win a lot of games. But if you're not making jump shots, it's really hard to compete. You're giving up easy transition shots. Again, standing around, standing around, no player movement. I think Harden makes this three. No, he doesn't. But imagine if he makes that three. Then the game is 92, 95, six minutes and 45 seconds left in the game. But instead... What happens? You foul. Bang, bang, play, right? Like, doesn't look like much of a foul, but those are the things that kill you. Grant has competed all night. Going to have to 
to continue to be great defensively. Those are the things that kill you. So they might say, clap your hands, everybody. I'm so upset. I pay for those tickets. What's the over under on how many times MB hits the ground? Yo, can MB stop falling on the ground? I mean, he falls more than Iverson. This seven foot big guy, stop falling on the ground, okay? Stay on your feet. Stop jumping for every play, every block, right? Stay on your darn feet, buddy. And B, can you stay on your mother? Can you stay on your mother? But at the end of the day, your superstar takes the blame. He takes the blame. He gets the credit when they win. And he gets the blame when they lose. And B's got to start having more dominant games, not just 30 points. We need 20 rebounds, four blocks, six assists. That's a dominant game. Not just your little 30 points and 10 rebounds or whatever was your stat line last night. We need, we need mother more. We need mother more out of Embiid, okay? Okay? Now, again, it's an eight-point game. The game's almost over, right? Like, when it gets down to the five-minute mark, Consider the game over. Again, standing around, they try to run a little horns play. Maxi misses. Defensive rebound. If the Celtics score after this play, I'm shutting it down. Okay? It's no, it's no more film to break down. Again, one-on-one -on -one iso ball. There's that sideline pick and roll again. Good defense from the Sixers. Oh, here they come. Here they come. Here they come. Oh. You see? Now let's rewind that rewind that play. All right. Let's look at that play again. Steal. Is anybody open? Is anybody open? I mean, I mean, dump the ball to Tobias. He's coming right there. You could just easily pass him the ball and give it to him. But instead, what happens? Is that an offensive foul? Okay, so we can keep we can keep going until the Celtics score again without the Sixers scoring. So irritating though i'm so upset that i bought these tickets and it can't and we can't win a game can we win a home game please against the celtics why do they have our number why can't we beat the celtics melton you did good last night five point game here they come here come the sixers here come the sixers they're gonna give up a three ain't they i mean your best offense is a good defense. Eight-point game is so hard to win if you score a three and then you come back down and give a three, and you give up a three. Again, here's that pick and roll. Nobody to pass the ball to. Offense is stalled. 13 seconds left in the in the court. This is where he steps on that guy's head. Sheesh. Vicious. So anyway, the game is pretty much over at this point. Sixers don't really make a run after this. Four minutes and 50 seconds left in the game. If they score, if Boston scores, it's over. Okay, rebound by Embiid. Here they come. I don't, here they come. Here come the Sixers. What are they going to do? Iso ball. Everybody's on one side. Okay, Harden, way to be aggressive. Not great offense, but way to be aggressive. Everybody's loaded up in that middle of the paint. No, no play, just a, a great ISO player making a play. But again, what comes down on the, on the next time? A foul. Four minutes in the quarter. Maxi makes this. Okay, Embiid, six-point game. Actually, four-point game, three minutes, 51 seconds off of a broken broken play. Maxi makes that three, man. We doing something. But again, if I remember correctly, Tatum just comes down and breaks their heart and just snatches their heart out. Mal Malcolm Brogdon. Look at that. Offensive rebound. Al Horford for three. 
boom, that's the play right there that killed us. That play right there killed you. You were down by four. Now it's up by seven. You give up an offensive rebound. You're scrambling. You don't get matched up. That's the game right there. It's nothing else to look at. And I'm just going to say this, okay? You can blame whoever you want. You can blame the bench. You can blame Embiid. You can blame Harden. You can blame Maxi. But the bottom line is this. If you're giving up offensive rebounds and you're fouling and you're not getting back on transition and your offense is just heavy on just two people and you're not getting good team participation, like you, your offense is not balanced and it's really just reliant on Embiid and you're trading twos for threes, you're not going to win. Bottom line, okay? Bottom line. I'm sorry, Sixers fans. We got another crack at this on Sunday. I think the house is going to be rocking. But the bottom line and be stop falling on the floor. Okay. Stand up. Be a seven-foot giant. Run up and down the floor. Stop running out of gas in the playoffs. Be the same player in the playoffs that you are in the regular season. Okay? Forget that MVP trophy. We want to see a finals MVP trophy. We don't want to see an MVP trophy, an empty hollow MVP trophy like Jokic for two years. I'm I, I'm really appreciative for you if you stayed if you stayed and watched this whole video, how we broke that down. I mean, it wasn't much to break down because they don't run any plays. Basic dumb pick and roll. Not that it's dumb, but if it's not working, you gotta go to something else. So all they run is sideline pick and roll and pick and roll at the top of the key. Or they just throw it to Embiid in the post and expect him to make a decision on after that. Listen, I'm Sixers to the core. You, you follow me? I'm Sixers to the core. We are Philly 4 for 4. Sixers to the core. More player movement, ball movement. We need some plays, man. We need some action. We need something. Something has to change. The tempo of the game has to change in order for players to get more shots, less standing around, more pace. Push the pace. Hard and be aggressive. We need Tobias Harris to get more shots. We need Maxi to get more shots. We need Maxi to be more aggressive. We need to get foul more. If we can do that, we can win. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of The King and Up. We hope you like this little breakdown, and that's what's wrong with the offense of the Sixers.